Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I am getting ready to go on a plane trip. So, you know, a uh, little plane trip. I'm heading over to Switzerland. I'm going to spend a couple days there, and then I'm going to go from there to Japan, and then I'm going to come home. And you may be thinking to yourself, hey, wait a minute, I know how the globe works, and that sounds like uh, you're going, you know, you're, <laughs> you're just continuously going east until you get back home again. And um, you're correct. It is a round-the-world trip which is shit awful. So a lot of you may, you know, I, I know when I was younger, I mean, if you're like me, you used to think like, hey, that'd be kind of fun to fly around the world. Nope, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. It is nice to go to these places. Japan is one of those places that uh, I dearly, dearly love. I don't get why a lot of people who are comic book fans, who are comic book readers uh, in the Western, you know, they, they hate manga. The country manga has been tied up on, in the culture war. And it's bullshit because, first of all, I'll tell you, a lot of Japanese creators, manga creators, have no idea about any of this shit. So for all of you people, and there's definitely several of you who hate manga because, you know, it's not, I, I don't even know, liberal enough? I don't even know what the fuck it is. But it's not, uh, it's, it's in the wrong side of the culture war. And so you're pissy about manga. And there are several of you out there, and I know this because you comment on the videos when I talk about manga. If that's you, I mean, just understand that the people over there making manga have no idea what the fight is even about. They don't know who you are, they don't know what you're angry about, and they can give no shits about it. They're just trying to basically make their comics like almost everybody else. Anyway, Love Japan would happily live, retire, and die there. Uh, next year, I'm going to get married. I think in Japan, uh, not, not, not new marriage, old marriage, old Mrs. Perch and I will renew our vows in Japan at the temple. We had at least some plan to do that in uh, 2020 and then COVID like a, a big dick fucked it all up. So we're going to go do that. It'll be a Japanese style wedding, which would be nice. My heart is in, is in Japan by far. It always, it always has been, always will be someday. I'll be back there. Um, I, uh, Switzerland is fine. It's a detour. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm telling you my travel plans. I, I don't. I do not know why. Um, it is, uh, you know, at, at times several of you will write in saying, "Hey, what do you think of this person? What do you think of that person? Won't you tell me your honest opinion?" And one of the things that my channel has gotten a reputation for, and if you search like comics perch and you like go through Google, you'll find a bunch of people on Reddit who say I'm a Nazi, which is fun. And then you'll find some people on Kiwi Farms who say I'm a pussy cuck, and that's fine. So you'll get a, you get a bunch of different opinions. But one of the consistent ones that's built up over time is like, old Perch doesn't ever tell us what he truly thinks. He is, uh, you know, he, he's trying to make it work for the comic industry, even though the comic industry is irreparably broken. I think that's something EBS has said directly multiple times, in addition to calling me a, you know, pussy and other things. Um, but, you know, it, it look... The, like all things, um, comics, like everything else in life, there's a lot of nuance, there's a lot of detail, nothing is, is extreme, and everybody's trying to get their take and get their, their kind of get theirs out of it. Um, the reality is, if you ask me to say, like, who are the people that I, I really fucking hate in comics, there's not many. There's a couple there's a guy who was a mainstream comic artist who I think more recently has done comic skate work, who is one of the biggest pricks in the universe, in my opinion. Um, it is not, no, it's not EBS, I, I, <laughs> but it is, uh, this guy is, a, is an absolute dick. He, and I know a couple of you know who I'm talking about. He screwed me over on multiple occasions when I actually had a comic shop. He no-showed. He, uh, he was a, He's a complete asshole. So on some levels, to you know, be in this world now where people say, oh, you know, it's customer first. And this, this individual in particular has said it's, uh, you have to, you know, do right by the customers. And, uh, he, you know, fuck that guy. Cause he, he did wrong by the customers numerous times by not showing up. Uh, the one time he did show up to the shop cause he lived in the area where I had shops. Uh, the one time he did show up, he showed up kind of drunk and interested and it was an absolute prick to the customers. So that's, that's probably where a lot of my cynicism comes for a lot of these efforts. I, I know there are live streams where people come on, they go on YouTube and they talk about the mainstream big two 
don't care about the customers and they the people are acting like pricks on social media. I'm like, hey, asshole, you showed up drunk to a signing. Fuck you. Fuck your wife. Fuck all that stuff. You you are a prick to numerous customers. So you you have no room to uh, to gauge anything. Uh, but that's 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 the screwy part. However, in terms of other people who are dicks, I mean, yeah, I mean, when you're running a retail shop, you do tend to remember the people who you pay to show up and they don't show up. There's a small handful of those people, uh, some of which I respect very, very much uh, as artists, but definitely not as people because they were they were assholes. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, if you've ever been a retailer trying to hawk shit, and, and by the way, screw all those people who make excuses for people who are legit dirtbags, okay? So I, I, had, I had a guy who didn't show up for a signing, and then all his douchebag mainstream friends were like, well, he had a lot going on in his life. Yeah, I'm, uh, that sucks, but unless the a lot going on in his life was got in a car accident and couldn't use the phone and couldn't call up and say, hey, man, I can't come in, you know, I, I don't fucking care. And when your excuse is that, uh, you know, you got hung over the night before, you just didn't feel like driving up, a uh, fuck off, honestly. There's a lot of that kind of behavior that's gone on comics. And I do remember that kind of shit. The vast majority of people in comics have been professional. And when I say professional, I mean, maybe they're not people I like. Maybe they're not people I'd want to hang out with, have a drink with. You know, they're, they're people who, you know, philosophically disagree with me entirely to the point that I actually have distaste for them. I had a comic creator once who did a signing who talked about how one of their favorite parts of going to comic cons was they could uh, basically get to stare and flirt with jailbait and not go to prison because, hey, it's a Comic-Con, there's a lot of people there and cosplays everywhere, and who's going to believe them if they, if they complained? I had a comic creator tell me that to my face. No, it wasn't Warren Ellis or Cameron Stewart. But I had somebody say that, and I'm like, you know, um, you showed up to the event, so you are professional, but you are also a complete and utter shithole, and I, I would never do business with you again. There's people like that. Uh, but in, in general, the vast majority of people in comics uh, adhere to the very simple rule of, here's your scheduled time, here's some money to show up at that time, you show up at that time, you sign some, some comics, and then you move on about your life. It's always nice when people in comics are genuinely friendly and they try and engage the customer with conversation and they, they basically attempt on some level to be decent human beings. That's always nice. I, I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's a low bar, but thank you for being kind of a generally nice person. But hey, you know, in the world of commerce, you take what you can get. So even people who show up, maybe they're not that friendly. You know, they're still nice. I like Art Adams. I think I love his art. I own a, a absurd and uh, probably stupid, as my wife tells me on a regular basis, amount of his original art, which was not cheap. And uh, I like him. I like him very much as a creator, as an artist. As a person who, you know, shows up to cons and, and works a table, he's okay. He's not, he's not the worst. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's the guy who kind of comes, he, he does his thing and he leaves. He does not, uh, he's not, he's nobody that you would go, wow, this is one of the best people I've ever met at a table, but he's a hell of an artist and you can't take that away from him. Awesome. So for me, the bar for professionalism is pretty goddamn low. Don't do things that make me actually feel repulsed in dealing with you. So when you write me, uh, mails and you say, Hey, who do you really despise in comics? Yeah, it's, it's fuckers who can't do even the bare minimum to kind of do their, do their shit, which thankfully there's not a lot of people who fall into that category. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, do I like it in, uh, you know, in when I, do I like it when a con advertises for Donny Cates cause he's advertised for the show and he drops out the last possible second and, you know, fucks over the con and the fans who are there who have already bought tickets. Yeah. I think there's a dick move. You know, do I, but, but Donnie has a lot of shit going on in his personal life, you know, and he has for some time. He seems to, for whatever reason, just kind of lead in with his chin to encourage that kind of stuff. But you know what, when somebody's encountering a bunch of bad shit in their personal life, standing there like a nagging bitch and going, 
hey, you know, you uh, you really should make better life decisions. Yeah, then who who wants to hear that? You know, I I, I want to see Donny Cates back, you know, his life put back together and writing comics. That's what I want to see because a lot of people like to show up and, and read his shit. And by the way, there's uh, plenty of people who give, you know, people like Donnie absolutely shit advice. Oh, you just do you, man. Who cares if you blow off some deadlines? There was somebody who uh, recently texted me going, uh, yeah, you know, I, I told Donnie, hey, you worry about your personal stuff. Don't worry about any of your deadlines. And uh, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for me to pick up some comics, meaning pick up some of the work that was headed to Donnie. And I think to myself, you know, Donnie's clearly got issues in his life, but fuck you for wanting to take advantage of that. That's somebody that you always want to say, hey, you know, get this guy out of here. Um, but it never works out that way in comics. And in generally, those are the people who tend to last. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, whatever. Anyway, I, I, in general, in comics, most people are good people. I know it's hard to believe that, especially if you've been listening to videos from various people talking about all the SJW writers are out to kind of secretly fuck all the fans in their own little way. But, but by and large, a lot of comic writers, comic artists, comic people, whoever you happen to be, are good individuals. If you can look past the fact that they vote against you differently politically, that they may have different standards of life that are different from yours. But, you know, if, if you were... Um, if you were trapped in one of those escape rooms together with them, they would probably try and help you out before, you know, you, you ran out of time and lost the game. They, they're probably pretty good people. You would have a drink and have a good time. Comics, like many things in life, once upon a time, included individuals who, you know, by and large, were, were you know, could figure out a way to get along. Even if we disagreed about fundamental things. We would be able to get along. Once upon a time, the big uh, dangerous thing in life was to start arguing about religion. You'd find somebody who was a Catholic and somebody who was a Baptist. And they would start arguing about the weird nuances of their religions, and they, you know, that was the big, you know, thing that you you didn't want to ever have a conversation about because it could turn it could turn ugly. Now, hell, if you just say. I think that Elon Musk is an okay guy, or I enjoyed the Chappelle, Dave Chappelle uh, monologue on SNL. You're immediately branded in some kind of cult. That's, that's where we are now. There's no, there's no safe space. Ironically, we need the safe space more than ever. There's no safe space to just allow people to just have a drink and be themselves. That's the true safe space that we need. Now he's a other bullshit. Um, by and large, the, the vast majority of interactions I've had in comics have been positive. There have been a couple dicks who have uh, definitely abused the situation, who either believe, you know, you have kind of prima donna syndrome and believe that they are more important than they actually are. You know, if you're looking for some kind of political ideological divide, I can tell you that some of the biggest pricks that I've ever dealt with are on the CG side and on the anti-CG side. You know, nobody who's ever kind of had a lot of interactions with Mark Brooks uh, walked away enjoying that experience. I, I mean, just for what it's worth. Uh, but by and large, most people in comics are good people. The, the better place in life would be to figure out who the uh, true a-holes are in the world and avoid them entirely. Because they, you know, the funny part is, very few of them actually produce anything remotely of value. The vast majority of them are, uh, you know, painful, aggravating, annoying, and, uh, and just their, their entire kind of life and purpose for being is to make your life unpleasant. They, they you know, generate energy off of the attention they get. They don't produce anything of value. There is right now, and this is going to be really hard for kind of probably lots of people in comics to hear. There is no single comic being produced right now that is so fucking good that the person who's producing it could be the world's largest prick and you would forgive them because their work is so amazing. There's plenty of comics I enjoy. Every month I find comics that I have a good time and enjoy reading but zero 
comics that I would put up with somebody being a complete and insufferable dickhead in order to read that comic. There's nobody who fits into that category. And uh, I, again, I love lots of the comics. I enjoy them. I have a good time reading them. But, you know, once upon a time, you know, during Chris Claremont's run on X-Men, I, I think I would be able to say, hey, I could, uh, I could deal with this person being an absolute prick. And it would still be worth it because the comics are so good. You know, an artist, I, I, there's lots of artists I absolutely love. So this isn't, this isn't an inclusive list. But Alan Davis, I love Alan Davis. I, his, his work, I pick it up, I enjoy the hell out of it. When he was doing some of the annuals for X-Men and, and uh, I would pick up that book, it was just some of the, I just enjoyed it. And if somebody came and told me, hey, Alan Davis uh, is, you know, trying to, you know, have sex with uh, people who are way underneath his age and he's an absolute prick and he insults people to their face and he's an asshole and everything else. I think I would have, I would have hated to hear that because by and large, everything I've heard about Alan Davis is he's a world-class bloke who is a stand-up guy. I would have hated to hear that, but I still would have been able to enjoy the comic because the work was so fucking good. It was so wonderful. Um, I don't, I don't, that, that's not the world we live in right now. Even though there are amazingly talented people, we still kind of need people to be good, good human beings in the process. And thankfully most people in comics are that. So uh, this video kind of a, you know, you may be listening to it going, what's the point of all this, this rambling nonsense, believe it or not, there is a common thread here in all this. And it's this, a lot of you have written me mail saying, Hey, who's an asshole? Who's not an asshole? Who do you like? Who, you know, who's the biggest prick in comics? Who do you think is a real dick? This video is my answer to all of those mails. Generally, one of you writes this about a, once a week. So, you know, this is the big positive spin on all of this. By and large, for what it's worth, 30 plus years in this industry, going to cons, going to places, going to Comics Pro, going, meeting a lot of these people, having drinks with them, in some cases, listening to them talk about, you know, the various creator or editor or whoever it happens to be that they want to fuck, whatever it happens to be. By and large, the majority of people in this business are decent people. Several of them are tired. Several of them are frustrated by kind of where the industry is going. Several of them, like a lot of us, are lost human beings who are just trying to figure out where they stand in this world, which is increasingly hard to figure out. Plenty of those people. But the majority of them are good people. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I probably, it would be nice if we could accelerate to an end point for some of the jerks. But... You know, unless you have, if you get the job as editor in chief or some senior position at Marvel or DC or one of these, you know, image, if you do, give me a call. I'll be happy to say, hey, these four people, you should avoid like the fucking plague, and I'll be happy to do that. But uh, but other than that, you know, what what's what's the point really? Anyway, sorry for a weirder video. You guys asked. I've ignored those mails for months now, and so finally, I've done it. So there you go. I hope it was uh, everything you ever hoped for and more. <laughs> um, you know, I, probably an unsatisfying answer in a lot of cases. I didn't go on, like, I didn't do this video like, Mags Visaggio should be removed from all of comics because of SJW trans. I, I didn't do that. Nor did I do the, uh, what, uh, John Malin is the biggest prick that beard is just a disguise for a tiny penis. I, I, I don't know. What do you want me to say? Um, <laughs> the people that generally get a lot of the attention and a lot of the angst tend to be more performers than, than true a-holes or, uh, or saints. I, I it's just kind of the way it works for, I don't know why it's just how it goes. Um, you know, most people in comics just want to make a paycheck, do what they believe they love, produce those comics, and call it a day. As a consumer, you know, I don't know, buy the stuff you love.
So hurry up and downvote that video because I insulted somebody that you like, and that's cool. Thanks for listening.